All right, we're back. We got some Block 15 brewing out of Oregon. This one's called Hoppy New Year. It's an Imperial IPA. Let's see what we got here. 8.75 alcohol percent. Imperial IPA brewed and canned in Charvelis or Corvelis, Oregon. And it says Hoppy New Year was brewed to ring in 2020 with a celebratory display of citrusy and tropical hops. Enjoy lively hop notes of orange zest, grapefruit, tangerine, and papaya balanced by a carefully orchestrated specialty malts. Um, Hoppy New Year from Block 15. Okay, I think that's about it. Kind of butchered that, but we got through it. Let's see what it... See what it tastes like. <sighs> Hoppy indeed. This one is dank and resinous and it has a nice citrus hit. <clears throat> and I think you get a little bit of that booze as well. This is definitely different I don't think it's a I, I don't think it's a hazy I think this is a traditional IPA and it tastes pretty fucking fantastic all right we're going declaration grooming in collaboration with Chatelon Lux Chomps de la Bond. and this is in the uh, the milk steak base give you guys a little look at the ingredients there it is a tallow soap base and it's a really good one. I really do enjoy um, their soap base. So Chomps de la Bond is a lavender soap base, or a lavender scent, I should say. And it um, <clears throat> it was obviously made by Chatelon Lux. They're the ones who did the scent. It has notes of two different types of lavender, ylang ylang, eucalyptus, rosemary, bergamot, and black pepper. So there you have it. <clears throat> I got it right here in my Lancaster bowl with my little tiny Thater brush, silver tip. Absolutely love this brush. And I really enjoy this milk steak soap base. It's one of the good ones. I would probably have more of this in my den if the scent notes on his website weren't so fucking terrible. <laughs> like, on this one it wasn't that bad. On this one there was clear and defined scent notes and even an inspiration behind them. But sometimes it's just the inspiration and no scent notes. And I gotta be honest, sometimes I don't follow the inspiration. Like, like I'm, I don't know where the fuck you're leading me. <laughs> and after Nightman, I'm not really willing to walk <laughs> blindfolded with you anymore. So, <laughs> I just, I probably have more milkshake in my den if I fucking trusted your nose a little bit more, but I don't. <laughs> but I do trust Chateau Lux, so most of those are still on the table. Not that I like every Chateau Lux scent, but at least I know if I don't like it, eh, there's probably some artistry um, <laughs> that is above my, you know, my nose. All right. Really good. If you're interested, the inspiration was early summer, mid-afternoon on a Midwestern prairie on the Oregon Trail. So there you go. <clears throat> I got this at the Razor Company with that big-ass order. And uh, it was four ounces of soap for $23. So, 
there you have it. I'm also going to be using the Mula R41 razor. This one has the rose gold handle. I will say, it is textured. There's definitely something there, but it's not, you know, noteworthy or nothing to write home about. It's there. And then I use the Mula blade that they provided with it. Pretty nice little packaging, I might add. Alright, here we go. The R41 is notorious for being quite um, efficient and even um, aggressive. So I think we've I think we've determined that efficient and aggressive are two separate things. And the R41 is kind of known for being efficient and aggressive. But I will say, this being my first use with it, at least these first... At least these first few strokes, they feel pretty good. I've never really felt like I wish I had more knurling, but... Kinda wish I had more knurling. It is a open comb razor. Although, I don't think it's terribly, um, terribly open comb. It almost looks like it's kinda webbed instead of being like entirely open throughout. Just an observation I made. I'm trying to keep a light touch. I did have a somewhat rough shave with the the Chevette on my last shave. I was in a hurry. I was racing against the clock. And I think I, you know, applied too much pressure in certain spots. And I just generally wasn't as mindful as I should have been. So, definitely going to try to be more mindful and careful uh, throughout the course of this shave. Although, there are a few bumps that we may remove regardless, I mean, <clears throat> it's just all part of the process. I will say, I don't have a whole hell of a lot of experience with a Mula um, blade. Seems to be alright though. Doesn't seem, um... If I had to guess, I would guess the blade is not on the, you know, sharper end of the spectrum. Kind of, I think it would probably be somewhere in the mid to, you know, lower end of sharpness. But, kind of like the derby that cut me up on my Chevette shave, um, you know, don't. <clears throat> Don't be fooled, because it's still a razor blade. But so far, so good. That first pass was nice. I can definitely still feel growth, but that was with the grain, so not bad. I always kind of, I was always curious when people would use the R41 and say I could stop right there on, on their with the grain pass. And then I always kind of thought, hmm, <laughs> really? <laughs> could you stop right there? I mean, maybe if you were going for a serviceable shave, but you could probably get a serviceable shave out of any razor on with the grain pass. <clears throat> I don't know. These are just the way, that's just the way my mind uh, works. <sighs> Let's get some more of this lather. 
uh, to me, it's a uh, somewhat bright lavender. I don't feel like it's too dark, but it is. It does have, you know, some of that earthy, spicy tones to it. But I don't feel like it's too dark. Um, I do feel like the things like the Langy Lang and eucalyptus and rosemary you know these are all more brighter notes <clears throat> what else does it got bergamot and the black pepper so I think the earthy lavender is kind of surrounded by you know a brighter supporting cast and it's um I think it's pretty approachable. I dig it. And I've been wanting a a decent lavender for a while now. Um, because I don't really have many lavender forward scents. So I just kind of wanted to fill that void with a decent lavender. I thought um, Flowers in the Dark by Dr. Johns was going to do it for me, but... It just didn't. I thought it was kind of basic, bitch. <clears throat> but the soap base was good. I think this... I think this one's a very pleasant lavender. And soap base is pretty fucking phenomenal on milk steak. I always get a really enjoyable lather out of milk steak. I think it's fairly easy to dial in. I think it's fairly easy to dial in. And I think it uh, rewards you with a dense creamy lather I can kind of hear the rain in the background it's relaxing and I think uh, lavender is also supposed to be kind of soothing and relaxing, um, if I remember correctly. Like some people use uh, lavender candles or essential oils right before bed. So I think this might have, uh, it's about 10 p.m. as I shoot this shave, this might actually be the perfect choice. For uh, a right before bed shave. <clears throat> I will say I picked up another uh, declaration grooming. Slash. Um, Chatelon Lux. Scent. Called Confluence. I'm unsure if they've ever released it before in the past. But that one is another one that just smells really fucking good. Yeah. Mowing it down. So I think these two uh, pickups that I made with Declaration Grooming were definitely winners for me. <clears throat> really, they're winners for Chatelon Lux and Declaration Grooming. They make a good team. I trust Chatelon Lux um, with fragrance, and I trust Scott with the Milk Steak Soap Base. And so together, they create a pretty good team.
Now, Scott's original creations, I definitely, I, I mean, I need some vouchers from people that I trust. <laughs> Nightman. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget Nightman. <clears throat> I was just like... Psh. But... Chateau on Lux. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get this lather off the face. I think we did all right. I definitely drove over the top of a few bumps and uh, I was worried that we were gonna be, you know, uh, <laughs> bleeding in multiple places, but I don't think it was too bad. I'm gonna have to use the uh, R41 again soon with a, uh, a different blade that I'm more familiar with, kind of like my beloved Pulse Silver Blades. And we'll see then, you know, what it, what it's really like. This initial impression was not that, um, scary whatsoever. I would say it wasn't that aggressive. Um, it didn't feel that aggressive at all on this initial run with the Mulo branded blade. But I definitely think it was efficient, you know, like the legend tells. It's definitely, I think it definitely is efficient. I feel BBS. But I do think it's kind of the aggressiveness, which is supposed to be, you know, the scary part. I didn't think it was really all that scary, so I don't know. Like I said, we'll get more used with it. We'll get more familiar with it, but I did enjoy it. Wish it had a little bit more knurling, though. All right, we got the uh, matching aftershave splash here, which is in a somewhat familiar bottle. I think Sterling used to have bottles like this at one point. Perhaps they still do. You can see there it's got a nice restrictor on top, industry standard. And then we got some uh, mentholated drops that come with it. And I think they were kind of leaking a little bit during uh, transit because they weren't held on by tape or anything. <clears throat> but I think what we'll do is we'll just put a little, I'm going to bed so I'm not going to go and Berserk, but maybe just a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm going to bed, so I'm not going to go Berserk, but... We'll mix that together. Get a little bit of menthol in our aftershave. <clears throat> if I would have done this shave like three hours earlier, like I had planned originally, I probably would have put some menthol in the shaving soap as well but I got caught up in a lather and blade chat room and then I put a, a layer of a clear coat on our new countertop in our kitchen so that's kind of got a little bit preoccupied all right I think that will just about do it. So, Champs de la Bond, a very approachable lavender scent in my opinion. And it was a winner for me. And you can't go wrong with the milk steak base. Period. It's a good one. It's, I think it's one of my favorites. <clears throat> so, cheers guys. Thank you for all the support. I hope you enjoyed this shave. I'll catch you guys on the next one.